Hello, this is Overlord Boat, and we're back with another review video. Today, we'll be doing a video on the Congress. So, the Congress is a Tier 8 Premium Cruiser. It is going to be sold for 11,500 doubloons. So, that's around $42 or $50. The top bundle for it is about 22,000 doubloons. I don't really recommend that. So let's get into it. So pretty much the Congress is a tier 8 Alaska. It has around the exact same armor scheme, bows and afts the same. Its midsection is a little less uh, than compared to the uh, Alaska. Uh, the main difference between the Alaska and this particular vessel is the fact that there is uh, 7 guns instead of the uh nine guns that the alaska has and also that the congress's reload is a lot longer so the congress does have a 22 second reload while the alaska has around a 12 second reload i believe so the congress does take a hit to the reload uh while with only having seven guns while the alaska keeps the nine guns and has a better reload Saying that, this ship does get a very nice uh, sonar, radar, and consumable compartment. It does get an 8568 heal with uh, when you're running the uh, heal flag. It does get a 30 second, uh, 32 second radar, which go, which is American, which can go up to around. You can bump it. It's about you can bump it up to around 45 uh, second re, uh, sonar. Sorry, radar if you. Uh, do both the uh, commander uh, skill with the module and it has about a minute and a half of uh, sonar uh, the radar is 10 10 kilometers while the sonar is 3.5 for torps and 5 kilometers for ships and while we're getting into position let us uh, go over the build I have for this ship real quick so the build I have for this ship is with Halsey it is the grease the gears uh, with the uh, reloader with the feet the gun feeder now I do run uh, The with this particular ship. I do run the radar enhancement So you do get the extra time for that and then there is the adrenaline rush with the heavy 8p with the superintendent concealment and close uh, quarters uh, close quarter gunner um, You can instead of doing this you could do the priority target uh, instead, if you would rather have this instead for more situational readiness, or do AA if you want to build this ship into AA as well. With the modules, I do build into main armament with the uh, DCP-1, the aiming systems, DCP-2, and the concealment. Now, you are able to do the propulsion and the radar if you'd like to build that up more, but the thing is, this ship is very viable. It's very, very heavy on taking fires. So it's usually better that you don't actually do that. So while I watch the list of the match, let's just talk about the ship. So this is pretty much a battle cruiser. It does have a 60 second fire. Uh, so whenever the fires go, it goes for 60 seconds. And it also has a 60 second DCP. Now this ship does kind of suffer with the fact that it doesn't have fire prevention. So it really, 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 really suffers with the facts of having that. Like it doesn't have fire prevention and it doesn't have a regular cruiser DCP. So it's gonna suffer with that. So it's probably best for you to build into the fire build. But if you wanna do more radar, you can do that as well. Cause you can see here, I'm not built into radar. So the ship was able to get away. So it is kinda your, like if you wanna build longer radar to be able to spot DDs for longer, or if you want to have more fire protection to be able to not burn as long. So during when I was playing this ship for all of the day, I played about 22 battles. I rarely ever got Citadel. Even against tier 10s, even against bigger battleships. This ship just, just does not want to get Citadels. And the main reason why is the fact that it has the same Citadel as the Alaska, which is really low in the water. So it's really hard to be able to get Citadel in this ship. It's very hard. So it's a very tanky ship. It can take hits. It can also punch at as well. 
So, the main armament I use on this ship is the AP. The HE is, isn't as good because it's only 7 guns. And with the 9 guns, it's better to try to get good AP out. And with the fire chance of being 27%, I still felt like with seven guns, I wasn't getting a lot of I wasn't getting a lot of fires. Now, some of the main strengths of this ship is the fact that one, it's extremely tanky. Two, its guns are very they're they're pretty much the same dispersion as Alaska, just a little bit worse since there's seven guns. Which makes sense, right? It's seven guns. Uh, also with the, with the strong sonar and radar, it makes this ship a very, very strong vessel in a match. Um, because if you're, let's say you're alone with a DD on your flank, you're able to hydro the, the torpedoes when they're coming up, uh, if there is any, of course, and then you can also radar the DD as well. Now, with there being a 22 second reload, this ship isn't as strong against DDs as the Alaska is. So this ship is more of a cruiser and a battleship uh, hitting ship rather than a DD. Like, yes, when this thing reloads at 22 seconds, it can definitely hit a wallop onto a DD. But the thing is, if you're trying to rush a DD with sonar or a radar or even just in general, it's usually not going to go too well for you because you have a lower DPM. But this, but this ship does have the advantage of having decent anti-air. Uh, it's it's with the heavy AP, if you build into that on this ship, you are able to do around 10,000 damage for your citadels, which is amazing for a tier 8 cruiser. Really, really strong. So you can kind of consider why this ship has such a long reload, because you can do amazing citadel shots. Now, it does have some issues with overpinning at times, but at the same time, it's pretty much Alaska guns, so it can still, it still has, it has the 304s, I believe, or 305s, if someone correct me that. It's a 304s or 305s. Um, whenever I was playing it and testing this ship, whenever we got off of NDA, I had around the averages of around 80k damage with it in my first day playing it, so... I was still getting into the niche of playing this vessel. Um, from my time playing it, this ship pretty much is a less aggressive Alaska. Where that long reload kind of makes you kind of suffer a little bit. But at the same time, this ship can really hit hard on cruisers and battleships if they just give you just even too much of a, of a, of a broadside. As you're about to see here, this poor Zara is just, even when he turned like that, just gets plopped. All of those pins. Now, as you can see there, most of these shots aren't hitting all of the shells. It's usually hitting five or four. That's still really accurate for a cruiser, but the ship isn't as accurate as, a, as an Alaska. It's a little bit less accurate, but it still hits really hard. Uh, the ship does have a concealment of 12.2. Which is pretty... It's it's okay for it being a tier 8 Alaska. It's understandable. So... During this match... During my time playing, I was thinking, is this ship good for randoms? Is it good for ranked? Is it good for competitive? Well, if you're thinking about for randoms, it's really tanky. It can dish out a lot of damage. It has a sonar and a radar. And it has a heal. All, those three alone are very strong for a tier 8 cruiser. And even though it only gets three heals, as four radars and four sonars if you build into the superintendent. If you don't build in the superintendent, it only gives you two heals. So it's definitely worth it for you to build in the superintendent. This ship also has a 5.8 kilometer uh, anti-air with a 6.9 secondaries. So if you do build into anti-air, this ship already has like an Alaska level anti-air, which is really strong. You can build it into DFAA instead of sonar, which will give you a huge damage boost to your anti-air. And if you also build it into the second skill as well, it makes it your priority sector a lot stronger as well. So during this match, as you saw earlier with the DD, we weren't really able to kill the DD off because the radar wasn't long enough. 
So it's also a good case for you to try to build it into a radar if that's something you're going for. Or if, or if you want more of a survivability build, you can more build in survivability. Or you can build more into just jukes with building into propulsion and into the uh, DCB2 slot as well, the fourth slot in the modules. This ship does, it gives you a variety of build options while also giving you a lot of variety in how you want to play the match. So this ship is a really good premium to kind of teach you on what kind of play style you're looking for. And with the price being 11,500 doubloons, I feel like this is a pretty good deal with them removing the Alaska. I feel like 11,500 doubloons is a pretty good deal for this ship. And so, I already talked about the fact that it's good for randoms. Well, what about ranked? Well, in tier 8 ranked, this ship having a 27mm bow would be very strong in the in the tier 8 coming clan, uh, tier 8 ranked season. It would be very, 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 very strong. Uh, with it having the sonar, radar, a heal, and the 51,000 hit points, it would make it a very strong cruiser to be able to push in, hold a cap, or if it needs to kite, it can also kite as well. The only real downside I've seen of this ship is its 22 second reload and the fact that it has a battle cruiser level uh, DCP and uh, fire ticker. So with it being a 60, timer, uh, 60 second timer ticker and a 60 second... Um, sorry, a 60 second DCP uh, reload, it kind of will burn a, a lot if you're not careful. So you got to be really careful of your engagements if you're not going to be building into fire prevention or not fire prevention, sorry, into fire, into fire, like reduction. It's a good way. So fire reduction, because you're still going to have four fires on your ship, no matter what it's, you're not going to be able to put on fire prevention. So you have to, have to if you can build into fire reduction, build in the tankiness for that, or you can build in more juking with the speed modules. The ship gives you a lot of variety on how you can play it. So with it being confirmed good for ranked and, you know, just memeing around having fun, what about for clan battles? So let's think about clan battles. For for our tier 8 clan battles, there would of course be CBs. Now, this ship is pretty much, it can do a variety of roles as radar, sonar, it can tank, it can heal, it can also push, it can kite. It's only real downside is the fact that it has a long reload. Um, and the fact here is that I got to aggro with the Leon in the North Carolina, so... Um, so yeah, I died, of course. Like, this ship isn't, like, as I'm trying to prove, it's not, it's not invincible, but it also has a lot of tankiness to it. So... Um, if you guys have any questions about anything I'm talking about, definitely let me know down in the comments down below. This is my first time doing a video with SAT, SAT score. He's not here today, so I'm just doing this, trying to get this video out for you guys as soon as possible. So for clan battles, this ship can do a variety of roles. It's a really good tanking ship. It's able to kite, able to push, has a nice heal, has a nice concealment. It, it's all around a really nice ship. It's pretty much a mini Alaska in all terms. And Alaska is already a very strong vessel. So in the end, I feel like this ship is worth the 11,500 doubloons. It's not, it, like, it's an all around good for everything. It's good for comp, good for ranked, good for randoms. It's good for memeing if you want. You can run a triple div, just W key at a flank. It'd be really strong for that, especially with the, how much damage these guns can do. Definitely really, really strong indeed. Um, But yeah, as of right now, this match, we're definitely going to win this match. It being 10 to 4. I got two kills, 97k damage. Now, with this being a tier 8 cruiser, 97k damage is pretty decent. For a tier 8, for a tier 8 cruiser, that is pretty decent. It's It's pretty good damage. Um, on average, for most of my matches, I got around 80,000 damage. Um, one problem I did have is that this ship does have a problem of kill confirming. That was one real issue I was having where I wasn't able to confirm my kills more that it would be stolen due to the fact that it has a longer reload. Kind of like how battleships are. 
So that's, that's that was kind of one of the issues I had with it. But I don't want the negatives to outlay the positives. This ship is very, very fun. Like, I, I enjoyed this pl ship playing it the whole time I was playing it today. It was a blast to play. So much fun. So much fun to play it. Uh, I would definitely recommend this ship to buy for the 11,500 doubloons uh, when it comes out. or It's already out right now, actually. By the time this video comes out, it'll be out. So I'd highly recommend this video, sorry, this this ship to anyone that wants a tier 8 that's fun to play. It it doesn't punish you really for bad plays. It, it does a little bit, but at the same time, it still gives you the heal to be able to not suffer so if you make a mistake and you're out of position for a little bit you can still get out of the position and still survive so it's definitely good for that and it gives you enough opportunity to not where you're just gonna suffer um it's not like a it's like a, it's not like a mains right where a mains doesn't have a heal and you're out of position you're dead this ship it gives it where you have a heal uh and so you're able to come back from that mistake so, so for some final points, uh, let's see. So we did 97k, 49,000 credits, uh, two kills, two settles, very nice. And we're top of the team here with the two kills. Like, very, very nice match. Did a really good job with me playing with my friend George. Very well done indeed. So some final points. The ship, I do find it to be a nice credit farmer. 499,000 credits, even though I kind of died early, was really nice. Um... Also could be a nice uh, commander to grind your ships on as well, to grind your commanders. Very nice to be able to do that as well. Overall, I think this ship is a very good buy. I highly recommend this ship. A lot of fun. Um, definitely, definitely recommend it. If you guys have any questions, definitely leave them down below. Thank you all so much again for watching. Uh, I'll talk to you all later. Deuces.